Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, Nine Motor Gang here, and I am joined by Derek from 6011G Genesis. And this is the little robot that we built in about 12 hours. So we're just kind of going to go down and break it down and do a full on explanation video for it. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and let's get into it. All right, Derek, you kind of want to start off with the drive base. Yeah. So we went with uh, 450 RPM, the 3.25. Uh, traction because Evan likes to drive traction and this is for a barrier cross. Uh, Evan had this in um, in spin up and I had someone like this in over under. We figured out that this would be the best uh, option for uh, barrier cross so we really recommend this. And this is uh, tw around 20 holes long. As you see these are practically touching. Like they're really close but we did that so the because it's a 15 inch of the X bot. And so we did this so we can have more uh, expansion out the front. Originally, we were gonna have more expansion out the front. Yeah, I mean, the way the rules are currently worded, um, since it's like point to point, um, by going from there uh, to there, if since this is shorter, like if you went from there to there, that would be a longer distance. But now if I'm going to there to there, it's shorter. So it lets you do more front expansion or back expansion if you want. But they're probably gonna reword the, well, they've said they're gonna reword the rules anyway. So mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if that'll be relevant later on. We were originally going to have a uh, drop down intake, but we decided to go with a um, just a just a regular uh, what was a rubber band drum intake, and sure the easy just pick it up, and then we can cycle. So. Yeah, so that was kind of based off of my change up robot. Um, basically, you just pick them off right up the ground. It doesn't even have to move or anything. It's really easy to build. Um, so yeah, uh, but rubber bands give us a little bit of force for the bottom. Yeah, basically, you just need to make it so that the bottom of the rubber bands is shorter than, I guess, 3.25 inches. Um, and then just kind of, you can drive into it and pick it up. And then moving on to the intake, we have two motors for the intake. Um, so we have one, that's just a 5.5 watt motor at the back. So this robot doesn't actually use all 88 watts um, because we have seven 11 watt motors and one 5.5 watt. And that just chains all the way up to the intake. Um, and then basically, once you get that in there, you just index, um, which is kind of similar to what I did in spin up. And then you can just run into it again and then index. And then we don't have any more balls here. Um, we only have two. But I mean, you just repeat that process over and over and over again until you're like full of balls. And you just go until you're full all the way up there and you have all the balls full down there. And then this has like... I think six different rubber band drums, mm -hmm. one of which is powered at the front. And then Derek, you kind of want to talk about the whole rolling through process. Yeah. So we decided to test the uh, with a, a rubber band. Uh, was it called ramp? Ramp instead of poly. And we figured we found that works really well because it gives a lot of uh, if you want to intake basically, is it pushes up really well because it, it gives a lot of. Um, of, of springiness onto the rubber bands instead of poly because poly is like straight this is a lot better and um we do recommend teams do this because of the poly limit this year additionally um poly is slick it's so, like you can slide up and down on the poly but you don't do that on the rubber bands like instead of sliding up you can see it's basically just like rolling the ball up the entire way um which means you don't have to worry about like even if you don't have any power on the motors like your balls aren't going to fall down at all um, as opposed to something like a tower takeover tray, where when you cut power, all of the balls just kind of fall down. So there is a lot of rubber bands in this robot. How many are there on there? I think it was 54, but like they'd snap and we kind of put them back on. So it's like somewhere around there. Yeah. As, at, the, at the top, we had a big issue with them just like uh, not not uh, having enough pressure. So we have uh, two on the side right here and two on the side right here. Basically what it does, it kind of funnels it into, you can see that right there, both of these are funneling. And so when you um, when you finally get up to the top. You... Yeah, just kind of the way the motor's at the back there, it kind of likes to go over to the side, kind of like that. Um, but then you want it going out the center, obviously at the top. So it just kind of acts as a funnel um, then, in order to kind of guide these in. And then these one, this one, uh, so <laughs> we were originally gonna use um, a chain but I didn't let him. But it was it looked good though. But um, it looked goofy. But basically, this just acts as downward force and basically just um, gives gives the ball a little bit of spinning. When it's I see that. basically the exact same as that ramp at the bottom, but at the top there, you can kind of see, kind of forms like this V shape around this kind of central sprocket right there. Oh, and this this guy is also like 
he's mounted on rubber bands just because you kind of want a steeper ramp at the bottom uh, just to get the balls off the ground. So you can see kind of going in there. And that's just mounted by a standoff on uh, high strength pillows. Uh, nothing fancy there. So basically, yeah, it's similar to a counter roller. We were actually going to consider running counter roll. That's where we originally had the bearings down there, but we just didn't end up needing it. And it would have been awkward to try and get chain and get that spinning the opposite direction. And then it just kind of mellows out there. And those are just kind of held up by rubber bands. Um, you can see that black rubber band is just holding up these rubber bands. Just that it has a nice amount of contact there. Um, but then if you didn't have those, you do sometimes lose contact in there. You can kind of see for outtaking at least. You right there, it. Yeah, you have a dead spot in there. And now the ball is just kind of floating around, which is bad because then you can end up with it jamming. So just kind of pull those up and that did the job nicely. It wasn't hard to tune just because the rubber bands are so flexible. Um, also, this brain sucks and ports keep disconnecting. Yes. Um, yeah, just because of how flexible it is, um, that all works pretty well. And then kind of at the top here, um, you want to talk about these? Yeah, so uh, these sometimes work. So usually, like, when it's uh, like this, it just rolls in. I see right there, those kind of act like a funnel. So uh, when the when the ball is, is right in here, it makes sure that it's not like... When it's like this... Um, Sometimes it gets stuck, but Evan just has to go back and go out. And so, it goes like that. Yeah, the main issue with that is is it needs to be centered when it leaves. Here, here I'll just load that in. Yeah. Um, because we originally had issues where, like, it wasn't perfectly centered where it left. But if, like, you're off to the side, you kind of get stuck in these teeth. And sometimes it would just, like, go flying out the top. Like, it would be compressed, and it would just go up. And it was not at all consistent the way that it left. Uh, and given our time constraints, it was just easier to sometimes have to run it back. Um, you could probably maybe make those a little bit shorter. Right now, I think they're 0.875 inch standoffs. Um, we never messed with shortening them down because it works enough. And this is more just a proof of concept robot. It's not actually going to go to any competitions or anything. And with structure, we just use um, U channels, uh, cut U channels at the front. And then, let you see that right there. And with a uh, boxing, can't really see that. Yeah, you can possibly see it better on the other side. It's shoulder screws at the bottom, boxing at the top. And you can probably see it in there. The U channel stuff is also all boxed. I'm um, using shoulder screws and boxing standoffs. Um, cross brace at the bottom there. And then we have um, standoff uh, triangle bracing at the back. And so with the, with, with using U-channels, they, they tend to bend really easily. So you want to add spacers in there for the same, um, like as like a boxing, if you would do the same design. So we just put spacers in there and then on the top right here to make sure there's no bending. And then same U-channel type boxing right here. Yeah, and again, those are those are mounted up on stacers and then boxed, especially at the back, because those will be rammed by other robots. And everything is built to have like good clearance. So you can see like we have a U channel brace at the front, and then like a half cut, but it's going up, not down, just to help make sure that you have really nice clearance along the bottom of the robot. So barrier crossing is super easy. Um, in fact, this guy got airborne uh, sometimes when crossing <laughs> the barrier. Um, it can also wheelie. Yeah, it can also wheelie just because the really low clearance. Uh, but don't try to go for a wheelie because, um, the, that was unintentional. It's just something cool because of the half cut at the back. Also, um, the other reason it wheelies so much is this guy is like 9.8 pounds. Um, so insanely light, which is kind of crazy considering we actually didn't even try and build it light. Like you can see, usually on most of my robots, I use like nylon screws, um, for the bearings, but we're still using like metal screws and stuff for the bearings. Like we didn't even try and make it as light as possible. I think I know why. We have no flexors on this robot. And up there, yeah, no, it's all steel. It's like not even all nylon. And we also still have a bunch of uncut shafts um, because <laughs> I forgot to bring home the box of cut shafts and only the uncut shafts and whatever we had on our robot. And yeah, no, no point wasting material. And I don't want to use a hacksaw. Yeah, it's just, there's not a lot to it. Also no pneumatics probably helps a ton with weight. Um, because we, we didn't see a huge need to add them. Because, I mean, it, this robot can do everything. It could probably be a little bit better. Especially having, a, like, a pneumatic cylinder for, like, descoring. Because that's what this guy's kind of there for is uh, basically... Yeah, you just kind of... If you line me up... I'll, yeah, you're right there. And then you can see those just kind of get descored. Um, obviously, they would go flying out the back if they weren't blocked. But um, you could probably have something a bit more active. That way you don't have to ram into it as much. Um, and then same thing at the bottom down there, except you can just kind of ram into them. 
So yeah, basically the strategy with this robot is you prioritize capacity over speed. So you just kind of do that, load up with balls until this entire thing is full. Um, and then once you have this whole thing full, you just kind of go down over to one of the tubes, um, specifically near the end of the match. And you would just kind of like score them all in a row and you just keep pushing them down until you have your thing full and then you just end the match there so they can't like ram in and try and de-score the whole thing. They might be able to de-score one, but, like pushing into your robot and contacting it. Um, but you could probably just like at 0.1 seconds just like drive back or something. Um, you could even just technically, if you really wanted to, like add a button to your code. Like as long as you're pressing it and then you'd wait until like brain timer is like, so I guess for VRC that would be 104.9 seconds. If you're pressing this button, just drive back. So right at the very end of the match, you would just drive backwards so you're not touching. So the reason why we went for uh, it being a slower intake, because if if, if you if you saw it on 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 Discord, that really fast intake. See, uh, the reason uh, so we could just push it, but if it was a lot, see right there, just push and roll. But if you saw on on Discord the one that was really fast, it just pushed them and it descored them. It was really, and uh, we saw it was really consistent. Yeah. So we wanted to have, con we want we want consistency over quanti uh, quantity. It, well, in my opinion, you also want to fill up the goals. Like you want the balls close together so you can fit as many of them in as you can. You don't like you don't want to be throwing the balls in and having them go like super far down the alley or whatever. Um, well, also right now with the, with the new rules, uh, that would be illegal. Yeah, and for Auton too, because um, you don't, you can't like throw them down to the other side of the field during auto. So like, just by pushing them out and barely having any space in there, you're gonna fit more balls in the tubes. And so especially if you're camping there at the end of the match, you're gonna get more points than somebody who can only if their balls are spread out like that, they're only gonna get half as many as you do. Yeah, I guess a couple things improvement wise over this robot. Obviously, it has no pneumatics, and you could still add 5.5 watts of power to it. So there's definitely lots of room for improvement. Bigger intake. Bigger intake would be good um, because lining, and it also has no funnel, um, so right now it's kind of hard to drive. Um, It'd be very accurate. So, so you, you can do like standoff funnels or uh, three wides because the plastic. I don't we like you can use plastic funnels. It's just um, standoff or three wides would be better for structure. So yeah, just add more power. This is a 15 inch robot again, um, so you can make this robot wider, longer, taller. especially taller. I think would be big because with a 15 inch robot. Um, you kind of have to do that rubber band thing to, in order to get pressure at the top. Um, and just kind of scuffed the way you kind of have to throw it up and have it on top with no supports. But with an 18-inch robot, you could easily just have something above there. Um, so that would help. Side funnels. Um, this robot did have some problems when it was like having a lot of balls with jamming. Um, so you can see right now we just have these rubber band things out the side to stop balls from kind of falling out. It's like, here, let me get that in there. But like, there's not really anything to stop the balls from just kind of going all over or going like uh, too wide because, oh, oops, wrong button. Ah. When we would fill up with like eight or nine, uh, they would they would double up and then and start jamming. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is these rubber band rollers are not at all running at the same speed. Um, initially, we were thinking maybe like you want them going faster, the, obviously slow at the bottom and fast at the top for intake is usually good. Um, but that doesn't really work super well because when this ball is going faster and it wants to pass that one, usually they end up going sideways. And it's kind of hard to do here, but you could end up with like, that happens sometimes. And then you kind of just, you have to shuffle around and it gets really, really awkward inside. Um, no plastic, so you could add plenty of plastic to it. Definitely on the sides, like, uh, like uh, what's it called? Like a long strip of plastic or, or one by. Yeah, one by. Well. You can only be like eight inches long, and that's like, so you probably, I don't think you could do one piece of plastic all the way across, but you could maybe use two. Um, that's probably not the best use of allocation for plastic. Uh, something better for descoring probably, because um, just ramming it at the back, like, it worked doing that, but it wasn't like insanely consistent, and especially not consistent at getting all the balls out. Like, usually it would have like one ball left in there, which especially for like the middle goals since that's just a majority they would still get like the six or eight point bonus maybe like on on the if you do the same design uh like for definitely for high school a uh, top roller would help a lot like evan said but um as you can see this is a big these are all like so this is running at 200 oh also just before i forget these are iq sprockets 
Um, so they're not technically VRC legal. They are VEXU legal, but they're the exact same as the other. This one's, this one's. Yeah, it's, it's that one. Just use those sprockets instead of the blue ones. And you could build this robot completely VRC legal. Yes. Um, I think those are the only things that make it not legal. Also have better brain placement. Uh, this is mounted in there with rubber bands. Oh yeah. So they're, uh, as you can see, they're all right at different speeds. So this one, uh, 24 and 16, 32. So, um, and this one's a 24. So these right here, like, like Evan said, uh, these are all, both of them are running really fast. And then going up here, uh, the big Orbandrum, since it's, uh, since it's running at 200 RPM, as you, as you can saw, it was really fast. So something I would change, de like definitely uh, slower, like um, slower, slower indexing because the balls like get uh, get away really quickly. If you wanna see, we'll push it right here. See how far they get, like, and then they they they, they do um, get close up there. But when you yep. have more balls, your your, your capacity uh, goes less and less because there's a lot more dead space because how fast these are running. Yeah, I mean you want to have all these balls touching all the way through because in order to be able to like score and sit at the end of one of the long goals at the end of the match, you need to be able to hold like I think eight balls in order to guarantee yourself the center control. Yes, which is. 10, 15 would be the best. Yeah, 15, ideally you would just get 15 balls, drive over to the long goal at the end of the match, and then just unload all 15. And I mean, if both robots do that on your alliance, you're pretty much guaranteed the victory. I wonder what they're gonna do if with that. I'm scared they're gonna. I'm scared they're gonna uh, do an allow on the the capacity limit. Yeah. Also, for people watching in the far future, um, we're filming this with the point one game manual update, so there is no capacity limit on the balls yet. This robot is designed to fit lots of balls. If they drop the capacity limit to like five or something, this robot would suck. Also, just going through and editing this video, and a couple more things I want to add. Um, exposed chain is bad. Um, so if you took this to an actual competition, you'd want to like protect some of this so another robot couldn't drive by and snap stuff and tune it for friction better like that's not a good way to do a chain tensioner um it works but it has a fair amount of friction um use like nylon nuts or nylon nuts just this robot has a lot of caps nuts on it uh come up with better structure there like box that and such and then that sprocket right there you would actually want a little bit bigger um for front intake or lower um we couldn't make it any bigger because of size but like you can see like it's barely grabbing the ball right there and sometimes it doesn't get it right away. Um, but you can also see that it's like very close to hitting the shaft. So if you had like a larger sprocket out out further, you could make it bigger so it would go further down and you would get more grip onto the balls. But then you also wouldn't have to worry about it hitting. Like we had to use the really thin spacers there in order to make that work. Additionally, I really didn't go into depth on this video, but like if you're wondering why we ran six meter drive base, how we built three hole gap, or why we're like using screw joints there, uh, check out the video in the top right that I'll have, um, which is linked to my drive base explanation video. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and I will see you in the next one.